Welcome, market participants, to another Three Things in Credit. I'm Van Hesser, Chief Strategist at KBRA. Each week, we bring you three things impacting credit markets that we think you should know about. What a week. I'm breathless thinking about it all. But maybe this quote from UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres on Tuesday at the UN's General Assembly sums it up best when he opined that the world is, quote, gridlocked in colossal global dysfunction, unquote. All right, put him down for one in the risk-off camp. This week, our three things are, one, corporate earnings. A spate of Q3 warnings are out, but the FedEx one really makes us think. Two, Fed tightening. The central bank's new and more realistic projections are an affront to risk. And three, the price of credit. With what we're facing, does current pricing make sense? All right, let's dig a bit deeper. Here come the warnings. Now, it's hard to find a top-down analyst, be it a strategist or a portfolio manager, that doesn't believe earnings estimates are too high. After all, it's clear that economic activity is contracting meaningfully, with recession likely rolling into 2023. Still, Q3 2022 earnings, using the S&P 500 as our universe, are expected to grow 3.5% over the same period a year ago followed by 6.1% in Q4, and this one we find most intriguing, 7.5% growth for full year 2023 over 2022. And by the way, just for context, consider that consensus growth in real GDP for the third quarter is 1.5% versus 4.9% a year ago. In the upcoming fourth quarter, it's 0.1% versus 5.5% in last year's fourth quarter. And growth is forecast to be 0.9% for full year 2023 versus 1.6% full year 2022. So earnings growth in the face of contracting economic activity doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Now, what does make a lot of sense is a steady stream of earnings warnings that have come out ahead of Q3 earnings. Bellwether names such as General Electric, Ford, McDonald's, Alcoa, U.S. Steel, and of course, FedEx, whose announcement a week ago single-handedly rocked the equity market. The common threads running through these stories has been higher than expected costs, no great surprise in this environment, along with the impact of the strong dollar. But the FedEx story had another layer to it. FedEx warned that upcoming fiscal Q1 earnings would come in 33% lower than consensus, and fiscal Q2 is expected to be 50% lower. It also pulled its full-year 2023 guidance. The company's CEO attributed the first quarter weakness to global volume softness that accelerated in the final weeks of the quarter. Results were particularly impacted by macroeconomic weakness in Asia and service challenges in Europe. The company's CEO, when asked if the deterioration in conditions signal a global recession, replied, quote, I think so, unquote. So what do you make of all this? Is this more of an idiosyncratic story or a systematic one? Well, it appears to be both. FedEx certainly has its share of operational and strategic issues, but we have a sense that this is also what normal looks like, a post-pandemic return to a more normal environment, one not supercharged by stimulus, one where cost pressures are very real and where geopolitical issues create headwinds for multinationals. The FedEx five-year CDS blew out 40 basis points on the news to 121 basis points, now 14 basis points wide of the triple B CDS index, and reflective of the risks it faces adjusting its cost structure and business model to a new reality. What you can be sure of is FedEx is not going to be the only one experiencing a humbling return to normal and a business model that is struggling to keep up with technological disruption. It would be wise to pass each of your own companies through these two filters. All right, on to our second thing. The Fed gets real. Now, we have to admit, we felt like there would be no new news coming out of the FOMC this past week, namely another 75 basis point hike, widely expected, a replay of Chair Powell's Jackson Hole messaging, 
and how he is channeling his inner Paul Volcker in being singularly focused on taming inflation. Now, clearly, the equity market wasn't sure what it was hearing during the meeting as it bounced around furiously over the course of the press conference. At the end of it all, we came away feeling not very good about risk. Maybe it was because the SEP, the Summary of Economic Projections, came into the realm of the real with material downgrades to growth and employment and a material hike to interest rates. Maybe it was essentially the confirmation from the central bank that a recession has to happen in order to bring down inflation to its 2% target. Maybe it was the much maligned dot plot that signaled Fed funds would remain elevated, 4.6% was its forecast, through 2023, something the futures market agrees with. Maybe it's apprehension over the Fed's damn the torpedoes intent to reduce its balance sheet on top of all of the rate shocks. Ugh. For us, I think it's the realization that we have moved to a new paradigm, one where rates are higher for longer, one where we don't feel like the Fed is balancing its dual mandate, focused instead on, quoting a comment I saw today, getting Larry Summers off its back. We just don't have the sense that the Fed is balancing all of the countervailing inflation data. Tips break evens, the super strong dollar, the slide in commodities prices, with what it is clearly and aggressively reacting to, the decidedly lagging indicator, CPI. We hold out hope that the Fed will aspire to being truly data dependent as it moves forward and temper its tightening accordingly. But we're not optimistic. Accordingly, our bias for up in quality credit got a bit stronger. All right, on to our third thing, the price of risk. So over the course of the past week, it does feel like we have moved to a riskier place. Consider the following. The Fed basically declared that it will take an unemployment-driven recession to tame inflation. Putin has dramatically escalated the war against Ukraine. A number of multinationals warned on earnings. 30-year mortgage rates are approaching 6.5%, and financial conditions indexes have deteriorated to a level last seen in April 2020. And yet the price of risk remains at or around long-term averages. High-yield credit spreads, 482 basis points, are inside, inside their 20-year average of 509 basis points, and nowhere near the 750 to 800 basis points we would typically see at this point in a credit cycle. Investment-grade spreads also remain inside their 20-year average. The forward multiple in the S&P 500, 17 times, is on top of its 20-year average. What gives? Well, part of the reason in general has to be that money has to go somewhere, and the U.S. is clearly the cleanest shirt in the laundry. So the safe haven bid is very real. In credit markets, reducing new issue supply is also helping, and there is a strong bid for higher quality credit from yield bogey buyers like insurance companies and pension funds. There is also a sense that private credit alternatives will act as a shock absorber to market sell-offs that, in the past, would have been more dramatic and more damaging to returns. Still, we believe the gravitational pull for spreads is wider, believing the mix of aggressively tightening financial conditions into an economy that is headed toward recession is not something investors will endure at long-term average spread levels. September and October are always tough months and story years, so perhaps investors are holding on to risk at current levels in hopes of a late-in-the-year rally and acknowledging that with liquidity drying up, it's tough to move positions. The problem is, this story doesn't figure to improve anytime soon. So there you have it. Three things in credit. One, corporate earnings. A spate of warnings, but the FedEx one reminds us that the return to normal won't feel like 2021. Two, Fed tightening. Its more realistic projections are an affront to risk. And three, the price of risk. Against the mounting wall of worry, current spread levels don't make sense. As always, thanks for joining us. Don't forget to check in on KBRA.com for our latest research and ratings reports. See you next week.